Welcome everyone to Laughter is the Best Medicine. This is our show about remarkable people who've taken their experiences going through hardship and adversity, but they've turned those experiences into triumph and incredible stories. One of the biggest go-to tools all of our guests used was the ability to harness the power of humor and happiness, even in the most difficult situations proving laughter truly can be the best medicine. Our guest today, tough as nails. He can write the manual on resiliency. Pat Dossett served nine and a half years as a US Navy SEAL. <laughs> By the way, the fact that the SEALs use laughter is the best medicine, and I use that saying as well, I feel like I'm, I'm close to a SEAL. Thank you for giving me this courage. You really stepped forward in your own courage and talked about your own mental health struggles. <laughs> And that was just so tremendously courageous and gracious. I think vulnerability um, is 100% a strength and an asset. I'm hearing the importance of team and this idea of by helping someone else, you're helping everyone. Teammates don't ask, they act. You have a quote uh, that seems to be one of your favorite life lessons. Enjoy it. We mm. each have a uniquely rewarding path to walk through life. It's on us to discover what that path is. Today, our guest, a three-time Emmy Award-winning journalist, Natalie Morales. I know we're really looking forward to speaking to Natalie today, not only because of her remarkable career in life, but also because she's the person who introduced us a few years ago. That's right. I, I honestly think she deserves credit for this podcast, Susie. First of all, <laughs> thank you for joining us. Susie and I have just been raving about you and how incredible you are. When we think of you, we think of the Maya Angelou quote, people will forget what you've said, they will forget what you've done, yeah. but they'll never forget when the way I mean, you make people yeah. feel. At the end of the day, that's what we all live for, right? The thing that amazes me, Natalie, is you've, you've had an incredible career. What's the best advice that you would give your younger self? Yeah, I mean, I would say to my younger self, and I always say this to interns when I get a chance to kind of talk to them, and it's really just go with your heart and go with your gut, and I think, you just have to always keep reinventing. The day you stop reinventing yourself or stop you know, trying is the day you're no longer on this earth. Six-time Olympic gold medal swimmer, Amy Van Dyken. Have you always been this positive and funny, Amy? I think it was when I went to college, I all of a sudden came out of my shell and I discovered that um, I'm kind of wacky and I enjoy it. Amy, the, the other thing we, we want to talk about, of course, is your accident and your life after that. I just hit a curb and I went over a six foot cliff and he could see my back was broken. My doctor tells me later that he shut down that trauma center. And you know me, I'm like, cause I had gold medals. And he's like, no, it was really bad. He saved me, got me back and been just crazy as ever, ever since. I said, I've always been very comfortable in the wheelchair. I've always been fairly comfortable with what happened to me. I I'm just happy to be alive because I died a few times in that accident. And I'm just psyched to be here. Jay Phantom, the host of Storybox. And this is a podcast that's gotten so much buzz in the past year. And not just because I think Jay's an incredible interviewer, but also because he's 24 and he has booked some incredible names. People like Tony Robbins, my friend Joel McHale, and even Matthew McConaughey. That was my impression. <laughs> it was a good one. Were you born with this gift of conversation? Like the moment you turn that camera on or the recorder on, it's almost like things just stop <laughs> in real time and you're like okay crap now i've got to ask a question i had to work extremely hard at trying to figure out okay what are the kind of questions that haven't been asked before you've interviewed over 400 people in a year everyone wants to know like how do you get these people on your podcast two years ago this didn't even exist my two favorite words is passion and persistence you laugh with them even if it's you're like what are you laughing at like just <laughs> it doesn't matter like smile that's why That's I love Susie. Jay. She's one of the greatest <laughs> laughers you'll ever meet. I'm a comedian, so that is oxygen to me. <laughs> and you've alluded to struggling with some of your own dark times. So I, I wanted to, to end my life and I attempted suicide. Everything that I've been through, it's all for a reason. And I say that I'm, I'm the eagle. I saw above, above the heavens. That's what I was created to do. For you just to light us all up with all of your optimism and joy and your positivity is really incredible. Today, our guest is wildlife conservationist, veterinarian, author, host of Animal Planet Show, Evan Goes Wild, Dr. Evan Anton. 
Matt, and I think you forgot to mention, he's also voted People Magazine's Sexiest Vet for three years in a row. We're so glad to see you. Yeah, so glad to see you too. So your favorite animal and why? It's not easy. The other animals will not be listening. Yeah, the other, the other <laughs> I mean- the, the, so You're not gonna make them jealous. What would you want said about you on your 100th birthday? That's an awesome question. I've never heard that before. I just want, uh, I hope I make a difference by then. I hope I really make a difference with our wildlife. I think there's ways to do that where everybody wins. That guy's a stud. He really feels like he should have been around in the 1800s. We'll tell you the tale of Evan Anton, doctor, traveling the outback in the darkest parts of Africa to save the animals. And it is the big man, Akbar Baja Biamila. What is the greatest lesson you learned from this year? If you stay ready, you never have to get ready. The curiosity and the drive you have, is that something that, that was natural that your father beat into you? It has a lot to do with my father and it has a lot to do with football. What was it about you that said, I'm not gonna be like that 78% of NFL players who are financially struggling when they retire and I'm going to take the risk to learn something new that I've never done before. You first go through this identity crisis where you've associated with being an athlete for so long, you really don't know who you are. But the one thing that I did take away from being an athlete was I wasn't going to take no for an answer. I was always going to find a way. You had to find a way. What did you have to remind yourself from your own teachings. It feels like an Oprah question. Um, <laughs> when I talked about sitting in failure, even as an athlete, that's what drives you. I will never feel that feeling. As human beings, we all wanna belong and we wanna fit in and we wanna feel loved. And I'm just really hearing you speak to the resiliency that you have. And I love so much of what you're talking and you're sharing with Matt and I today. I'm glad to uh, kind of hang out in this, uh, in this group. This is, seems like a very good uh, group to go deep. Uh, to have some fun as well. Uh, I'm always laughing at Matt. With. <laughs> okay, at and with. And at with. For someone that's worked with Matt for eight years, what advice would you have for me? Stay quick because Matt is so quick-minded. He's impressive. Um, I want to dog him. This is like a great opportunity to dog him, but I can't find an area you to know, dog him. No, as soon as I get off, he's going to he's gonna text you something, Susie. <laughs>